Last time we were taking a look at section 4.3 and we had talked about the greatest common divisor and the least common multiple. And we were about to have a formula that establishes the relationship between those two quantities. And the formula looks like, okay, eventually, there it is. So this is the greatest common divisor, least common for multiple formula. For any two non-zero whole numbers, A and B, the greatest common divisor of A and B times the least common multiple of A and B equals A times B. Okay. So in sort of shorthand, if you prefer, you can write this down that the GCD times the LCM equals A times B. Notice it only works for two numbers, A and B. There's not a relationship that I can create a formula for for three numbers. It's only going to work when I'm comparing two numbers and finding their quantities, okay? All right, so the cool thing about this formula is that if you already have one of those quantities, it means you can find another quantity or the other quantity pretty quickly and easily. So take a look. We're going to find the least common multiple of 72 and 126 using that formula and the results of example 4. So if you flip back to example 4, on example 4 we found the greatest common divisor of 72 and 126. What did we find that to be on example four? It was 18. So according to this formula, the GCD times the LCM should equal 72 times 126. So the quantity I know is the GCD. It's 18. So 18 times the LCM is equal to 72 times 126. How am I going to use these numbers then to find my LCM? Right. I'm going to multiply the two numbers on the right. Let's find that quantity first. Rebecca, I see you have a calculator out. Would you find that for 72 times 126? 9072, like that. Okay. And now I have 18 times the LCM, and Catherine told me the next thing I should do is divide by 18. Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. So when I divide the left side by 18, it cancels out. And if I divide the 9,072 by 18, what do I get? 504. So this is a very nice relationship. If you've already done all the hard work for one half of it, you can get the other half pretty quickly. And that's what it does for us. All right, so what I wanted to do next in this section is I wanted to give you examples of real life applications of greatest common divisors and least common multiples. And that's what these last two examples are, real life examples, okay? I have been known in the past to ask questions like create one of these of your own on the test when you get to the test. Um, it's also useful to you that if you're looking at problems that have a lot of language in them, being able to decide which of the two quantities it is asking me to find, because then you actually know which of the two you need to be working at in terms of, you know, the computational part of the problem. So here's an example. We're going to read through it and we're going to see if we can decide is it an LCM or a GCD problem. Two bike riders ride around a circular path. The first rider completes one round in 12 minutes. The second completes one round in 15 minutes. If they both start at the same place and at the same time going in the same direction and if they continue at a consistent pace, after how many minutes will they meet again at the starting place? So our first goal is to figure out, is this a greatest common divisor or a least common multiple question? Good. It is a least common multiple because they're doing something multiple times, going round and round and round. Okay? Now, a few details. Whenever I ask people to create questions like this, these pieces here in the middle are important because if they're not in the problem, the problem cannot be answered. They have to be going, starting at the same place, right? Think about doing our number line when we did these. If you started at a different point on the number line, this wouldn't match up. They have to be going, um, starting at the same time. They have to be going in the same direction, right? 
and they need to be consistently at the same pace. If somebody slows down or somebody speeds up, this won't work. Now, another problem that you see with least cone multiples, this is a really fun one. Okay, if you guys, are you, are you aware that hot dogs and hot dog buns do not come in packages that are the same size? Yeah, they don't, which is just really craziness. Um, and so if you were trying to find the least number of hot dogs and hot dog buns you'd need to buy so that you have one hot dog per hot dog bun, that'd be an example of a least common multiple kind of problem. Does that make sense? Because you need them to be the same number at the end, so how many packages do I need? And therefore, how many actual hot dogs or hot dog buns do I need? That would be another example of a least common multiple problem. So we are, in fact, looking for a least common multiple of what numbers? 12 and 15. Okay, so we have lots of methods, and at this point, there's no indication as to which method it wants me to use. So I'm going to use my favorite one to remind you. Do you guys remember what my favorite one was? Division by primes is my favorite. All right, so if you do 12 and 15, division by primes means that you write them next to one another, and then you look for a prime common factor, usually the smallest one, that will divide them both. And what would that be on this one? 3. 12 divided by 3 is, and 15 divided by 3 is, 5. How about 4 and 5? Will they divide by anything else besides 1? No. What'd you say? I said 4 will, but 5 won't. Right. 4 will, but 5 won't. So they both won't divide by the same number besides 1. And the way you find LCM, then, is you multiply these three together. So 3 times 4 times 5, which would give me what? 60. Now, when we're working with context problems, context problems typically have units, and this one, in fact, did. This is 60 what? Minutes. minutes. So after 60 minutes, they both cross paths again at the starting point. Okay? Any questions on that one? All right. Nothing would be complete without cupcakes. Man, you know what? I actually bought cupcakes to make them for you, and then I never got around to it this weekend. Wouldn't that have been really cool if I brought cupcakes and I have my example of cupcakes today? I could even have the plates that I'm describing set up. That would have been pretty cool. Man, what a bum. All right. Dr. Hands makes cupcakes for her students. She makes 20 chocolate cupcakes and 24 vanilla. She wants to display them on plates with the same number of cupcakes on each plate, but only one type of cupcake on each plate. Can you picture this? Like, this is what you do at a bake sale. If any, I mean, I've never really been a part of a bake sale, but I've seen people plate. This is what you do. You plate things together. You put all the chocolate chip cookies on one plate, and you put all the brownies on one plate, right? Okay, and you want the plates. In this case, I've got plates of my cupcakes to have the same number per plate, right? What is the greatest number of cupcakes that she can put on each plate so that they're all equal? Okay, so first thing you have to figure is, is it a GCD or LCM? It's a GCD, okay? She's trying to divide, or in this case, I'm trying to divide the cupcakes up into equal quantities, all right? When I do questions like this, I often get weird things like people wanting to do just a division problem. This is not a division problem. I've got two quantities I'm comparing. That's the first kicker, two, two quantities I'm comparing, or more. It could be more. Um, and you're trying to make the groups independent of one another. Like, I can't mix the chocolate and the vanilla cupcakes into the same plate and make this work. Do you guys see that? So sometimes I'll have people decide that they're going to make, you know, like bags of treats for kids and they want one of everything in each bag. And the question is, how many will can they make? Well, whatever the least amount of whatever it is they have, that's how many they can make. It's, it's not a division problem. It's a GCD problem, right? They're going to put one in each bag. We're going to, it's, the answer is already given to us before the problem starts. Okay, so there's some key ideas in this in order to make this work. The items have to be grouped within themselves, you know, like items together and you have to have the like items in the same amount of quantities, right? I don't want five cupcakes that are chocolate on one plate and four that are vanilla on a different plate. They've got to be the same, okay? All right, so let's take a look. GCD of what numbers here? 20 and 24. So let's do a different method. What method would you like to do? I did GC, or I did a division by primes a minute ago. What's another one we could do? Oh, let's do prime factorization. Was that what you were going to say, Vanessa? Fantastic. We must be on the same wavelength today. Okay, 20. So what number is the smallest prime that divides 20? 2 gives me 10, and then I divide by 
2, which gives me 5. How about 24, smallest prime? 2, which gives me 12. And then by 2, which gives me 6. And by 2, which gives me 3. All right, so I'm going to write each of them down. This is 2 squared times 5. And this one is 2 cubed times 3. All right, so when I'm looking for a GCD, do I choose all of the numbers or only the numbers they have in common? Only the ones they have in common. Now, with least common multiples, I would choose all of them. Every single number that's a base, I would use it. But for a GCD, I only use the bases they have in common. And what would that be, or what numbers would that be on this list of numbers? Yeah, it's just the two. Okay, and then we look at the exponents. So on the two's exponents, if I were doing an LCM, I'd choose the largest exponents. But when I'm doing a GCD, I choose the smallest, smallest exponent. And you don't have to remember all those details, right? You can have your notes with you. You can have your note card and have those details on your note card when the time comes for a test. What's two squared? Four. So if I were creating these plates, take a look and think about the question now. I mean, think practically in terms of creating these items. I would have 20 cupcakes to split, four per plate. How many plates of chocolate cupcakes would I end up having? I'd have five. And how many plates of vanilla cupcakes would I end up having? I'd have six, right? Because four evenly divides both the 20 and the 24, and it's the biggest thing that will do that. Any questions on that one? All right.